Okay, hello. Hello everyone. So I'm Will Di Chia and this is my uh, new video on introduction to financial accounting and the key area we'll be covering is adjusting entries. So welcome once more for watching this on my YouTube channel. Right. Now, why is it uh, that it's important to cover the topic of adjusting entries? We all know what this is about. Right? Those of you who have done it like in school, you probably have done it without knowing what it is. So the purpose today is that I'm going to walk through with you uh, what's the purpose of the trial balance and its purposes, more for review and revision. And we're going to look exactly at what uh, adjusting entries are. right? And the next thing is to go through an example to show how do we perform this adjusting entries or update the trial balance. Now this is a very important key process that many businesses perform in real life. The last point is to understand and explain the effect of adjusting entries. Now, adjusting entries are not just, uh, you know, just a set of numbers with no meaning, right? It's also important to understand how do they eventually affect the assets, liabilities, expenses, revenues, and equity of the business. Right. So these entries are not just items that appear in isolation. They have widespread effect on all items in the books of the business. Okay, so let's begin with an introduction on what is a trial balance. Now a trial balance generally is just a listing of account balances at a certain date. It could be month end, year end, right? like the example that you see on the right. Okay, so this is a very simple trial balance that is presented, prepared as of 31st December 20th. 2014, right? It serves as a very useful check on the arithmetical accuracy of the accounts drawn up. How do we know that this is accurate? Because when the trial balance is prepared, you find that it balances, so it gives good indication that there is accuracy and it, there is no calculation mistakes. Now, it also gives good assurance that the double entry rule has been followed. Right, double entry rule. Apologies for that. Okay, so where the trial balance doesn't balances doesn't balance at all, then you realize that chances are double entry rule may not have been followed, or maybe there are some calculation mistakes. So trial balance gives a uh, very good uh, and convenient way to check on the accuracy and the application of the double entry rule, whether this double entry rule has been fully applied during the accounting period. The downside about the trial balance is that it cannot be used to detect all types of potential errors. Certain errors can be detected even though the trial balance may balance, but in some cases, uh, errors such as wrong posting, right, instead of debiting, rental, and there is a debit on utilities, for example, such errors where po there is posting error cannot be detected at all. right? Okay, but generally, so long as both sides of the trial balance adds up equal, then we say that, that it should be fine, right, at least. Okay, now, why is it that we need to have the trial balance? Because the trial balance provides the numbers, which is the basis for preparing items such as the income statement, like what you see on the right, a very simple example. Now, it also makes it possible to prepare the balance sheet, also known as the statement of income or statement of financial position. Right? Preparation of cash flow statement is also prepared using figures from the trial balance. Right? And lastly, statement of changes in equity. How is it prepared? It's also prepared using the trial balance as a basis. Now the income statement as you can see here is prepared using the numbers straight from this trial balance. Right, exactly. Right, so therefore it makes it important that the trial balance has to be accurate as far as possible. Right. And the numbers are not misstated. Mis not misstated means that the numbers shouldn't be too big or too small. Right. It shouldn't be over or understated. However, in practice, it is quite possible that numbers may be misstated for all sorts of reasons, such as uh, rentals not captured, rentals not recognized, or recorded now these three words can be used interchangeably right usually if you hear of the term 
captured, it means recognized or recorded. Invoices for expenses not received, not uncommon. In some businesses, when invoices are received late, it is possible that these are not recorded in the correct accounting period. Right? Bad debts not written off. Right? That's also common. Right? And information on writing off of bad debts may not be available at the end. So therefore, uh, such debts may not be written off immediately. Now these have various implications including causing revenues and expenses to be misstated. Right. So if you have numbers in the trial balance that are uh, not accurate, misstated, then revenues and expenses may also be uh, wrong. The same goes for assets and liabilities which may also be wrong as a result of figures that are misstated. Right. So what figures am I referring to? They can be rental, sales, uh, they could be inventory values that could be wrong. So we are going to use a simple example to illustrate how do we perform the adjustments. Right. So we have example 1, Peter of ABC Groceries has closed his books for the year ending 31st December 2014 and he provided the trial balance as shown on the right, which is actually the same as what we have used earlier on. Right. He discovered the following mistakes like rental uh, of 60 for December wasn't recorded. Okay, so it was not recorded, it is meant for December. Wages of 40 in December 2014, these were still unpaid. In short, unrecorded also. Right. Debts of 50 were irrecoverable and these were not reflected in the books. These were not written off. So which means that uh, certain adjustment entries have to be prepared in order to ensure that these figures are accounted for in the trial balance. Let's go through the correcting entry. Okay, so rentals of 60 were not recorded. So what you do is that debit rental 60. Now these rentals were not paid, so these are payable. So credit payable. Now of course you can choose to record this as accrued rent. That is possible. Right. So now the next one. Wages of 40 per month remain unpaid end of the year. And those presumably have not been recorded. So how do you record the 40? What is the adjusting entry? Well that's quite simple. Debit the wages the amount 40 credit payable but you could use accrued wages if you like debts of 50 were irrecoverable okay not too bad debit uh, bad debts or irrecoverable debts credit the receivable 50 so that's uh, you know the first step to getting this right. Make sure that you are aware of the accounting adjusting entries. Then we can move on to doing the actual work. So we will need to have some workings to prepare and uh, find out what is the final adjusted trial balance. So we have this working here where it is broken down into uh, first the original trial balance without adjustments. So this was taken straight from the question. Now you have next uh, two columns and these two columns is, as you can see here is meant for adjustments. So with whatever adjustments that take place then you get what you call the final adjusted trial balance and this is what we want to achieve. Okay, So let's go on. The first one, rental of 60. Okay, So we have to debit rental by 60. Let's locate that, debit rental by 60. Simple. Credit payable by 60. So that's the first one. Next one. Wages 40 payable. Wages 40 payable. So it's not just 60, but now it's 60 plus 40. So there are two payable figures the rental and the payable wages. Okay, next. There are bad debts 50. Okay, so there are bad debts, so we just insert another line. So bad debts of 50. So that's the third item. 
Now and then as uh, okay apologies it's not here. It should be right here, it's a debit fifty. Credit receivable of fifty. Right, so this is uh, what we found out just now. Right, to record the write off the bad debt debit bad debts and credit receivable. Right, fifty. Okay, so the adjustments have been done. Now the total of the debits here is hundred and fifty. Total of the credits here also hundred and fifty. So let's work on the adjusted trial balance. Okay, this is quite simple. What you need to do is that like for example sales, so there are no adjustments, so therefore the sales remain the same. Purchases, no adjustments, remains the same. Rental, however, there are some adjustments. Rental is 360. Right? So because 300 plus 60, 360. Utilities is 350. No adjustments required. Wages, there is a $40 debit. So that gives you 480. Okay. Share capital, very simple, remains unchanged. Reserves remains unchanged as well. No, anything else? Receivables for 510 minus 50 gives you 460. Anything else? Payables give you in total 180 plus 60 plus 40, 280. Anything else? Bad debts, one, uh, which is only just $50. So once you have done that, confirm that the trial balance is correct by summing up the debit and credit columns and see if they add up to be the same. Okay, so I'm going to try adding up. You can try adding up yourself too. See if it adds up to be the same on both debit and credit sides. Okay, have you done that? Okay, let me give you some time. So uh, what you do is that you take 1002 plus 360. Right. Plus 350, plus 480, plus 460, plus another uh, 50. So that's how you go about it. So you should have 2,900. So repeat the same process on the credit column. 2,000 plus 500, plus 120, plus 280. Now you find that both sides of the trial balance equal. Right, the debit and credit amounts are equal. Given that they are equal, it means that the adjustments have been correctly performed. Right, and this is your answer. Right, that's your answer. Simple. Right, so now that we have done the uh, prepared the adjusted trial balance, okay, continue with the example. How would the income statement appear like? Okay, you have done the adjustments. The adjustments affect the expenses. So how would it affect the income statement? Let's go through this. Not too bad, difficult. The sales, 2,000. The chases remain at 1,002. Gross profit gives you 800. Okay, let's go through the item one at a time. Rental, how much is the rental? 360, you have utilities of 350, right? Rental of 360, utilities 350, bad debts, you know, if you can recall offhand, is 50. Wages, wages was 480, very simple, 480. Okay, so you have all these figures, and then you can proceed to calculate what is the net profit. In fact, this should be a net loss. We find that the net loss now is, goodness me, is much greater than earlier on. Okay, it's no longer net profit, it's a net loss. Right. And you can see that the effect of using an adjusted trial balance is significant. It can affect profits of a business. And if these adjustments are not performed, then what will happen is that the net profit or loss will not be fairly stated. Or in short, it means that you will not be reliable. So is it absolutely important to have the trial balance adjusted? Yes, it is. Because without adjusting entries, 
assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses will be incorrectly stated. And this will affect the usefulness of financial statements. Okay? And then in practice, there are of course a much greater variety of adjusting entries that may be posted. And these have similar impact, may be greater or smaller, right, on various uh, items like assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses. Right. So it is necessary to make sure that at the end of the financial period, all these figures like assets, liabilities, equity, uh, and your revenue should be fairly stated. Okay? Or properly stated. Right. And you all, you will understand that because this has a very big impact on the income statement. Right. And how do we view the profitability of the business? You will also have and a very big impact on the balance sheet. So financial statements depend heavily on the balance on the trial balance and it is absolutely necessary for trial balance to be correctly stated and as far as possible accurate and reliable. Alright, so I have done a very simple walkthrough on how to perform adjusting entry. I hope that this has been informative. Right and will teacher and you have been watching this on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. If you wish to have uh, an example of this spreadsheet, you can drop me a mail. Right, it's available for free. Right, thank you for watching. Have a great day.